In this video, I'd like to try to explain how you can make your door and your door frame, that's timber doors, wooden doors, um, much more resistant to forced entry and physical attack. Um, I'm gonna to describe to you how you can do it all yourself, or we can do this for you. So if you um, are thinking that you'd like this type of thing done on your door, um, then I, I'd be happy to quote you for it um, if you're in a sort of Greater London area. But I, what I need is to see a couple of photographs on your door, and I do it on WhatsApp at the moment. Um, so I need to see a photograph of your door with the door shut, like we've got it here, um, from the inside. And I'm gonna show you an example now of the picture that I need to see. And it needs to be sort of well lit. Um, use the flash on your phone if there's windows adjacent then wait till it's dark because the light coming in will prevent me from being able to see whether or not we can fit London bars and things like that. So yeah, so a picture from the inside like this. And also a picture from the outside, please. Again, with the door shut like this. And then any mortise locks on your door. So not this, I don't need to see your night latch. I've seen it and I can see that from the first picture, but any mortise locks, um, I need you to open the door up, please, and take a picture like that. So I can see the whole lock and what's written on the lock. So that, you know, it might be that the lock doesn't need changing. It just need the deadlock reinforcer, for example. So that's why I wanna make sure you've got the right locks. So firstly, I'm gonna quickly run through all of the devices and things that are on this door. And then there'll be a more in-depth uh, discussion on what they all are and what they all do. So firstly, this particular door, which is our door in the studio, we've installed um, a ERA British Standard Night Latch, uh, which is a high security night latch, uh, also made by Yale. We tend to use the Yale ones more often than the ERA ones these days. On the door frame, this strip of metal that you see and that runs most of the way down the door frame and has a hoop in it, is called a London bar. Now turning my attention to the hinge side, we have another bar of a similar design that you can see running down the door and that is called a Birmingham bar. Open the door up now to reveal the upper lock on the door. There's three locks on this door and this one is an era five lever British standard mortise deadlock fitted with standard excursions. So there's one of these here, and on the other side of the door, there's the other excursion. And further down the door, so I'm looking at the lower point on the door, and these aren't necessarily the recommended lock positions. This is just what we've done on this door. We have the same lock, but instead of the excursions, we have what's called deadlock reinforcers. And that's these devices here. This on the inside with the bolts, and if I turn it around, that's on the outside, that's the deadlock and door reinforcer. I'm going to open the door up now completely and show you the hinges and we have these hinge bolts. So we have one here, this is the plate that it goes into and there's another one further down there. And the final item on this door is a door viewer. We're seeing who's outside. So in more depth, I would like now to talk about the lock positioning and correct lock positioning. Lots of doors that we see, the locks are in the wrong place. So ideally, the night latch would be where I've put that bit of blue masking tape. So you'd have your night latch roughly shoulder height. It depends on who's living in the property and how tall they are, but that's roughly where you want it. A third down the door, we say. And your mortise lock, a third up the door, roughly speaking, at knee height. On, as I say, on this particular door, the reason that we've done this is because we're showing a mortise lock without deadlock reinforcers and a mortise lock with deadlock reinforcers. But more on that shortly. Okay, so the London bar. So the London bar is a strip of steel that is, um, they come in this shape or they also come completely flat. It depends on what lock they're going on to. That's screwed into the door frame with large, fairly long screws. Open the door now so you can see and those screws are going in about yay far into the door frame and they're repeated at regular intervals all the way down and then you have this hoop that wraps around the keep or strike plate of your night latch and this is where i see when london bars are installed um, how they're generally installed incorrectly if the 
inside of the uh, London bar is an in contact with the keep like you can see here it's actually pressing against it if it's not holding that fast and firm then it's not doing its job sometimes it's necessary if the particular London bar and arrangement of stripe plate don't quite marry up so there is a gap to pack this out and we would pack that out with strips of hardboard in order to maintain pressure from the London bar onto the keep so that this is held firm. The other thing that I see done wrong all the time is the London bar is too far over so that the bolt of the night latch actually hits the London bar first and not the not the stripe plate. This one is just about on the limit of where you want it to be so that the the latch there, the bolt, is moving up and down the plane on the keep so that it can send the bolt back so it can latch back in. And that's that plane that I'm referring to. So all night latches have got something on the on the air, like a chamfer, so that the latch knows to go back and it drives it back. If you fit this London bar too far over, your, your latch or the bolt is gonna be hitting the London bar, which is wrong. So some doors can have a London bar fitted, some can't. Some don't need a London bar, and I'll try and explain that in a second. But as you can see, this is the architrave of the door that you need this flat area here and it needs to be about uh, 25 millimeters roughly um, flat there so that you can fit the London bar in and avoid the latch hitting um, hitting the London bar itself. So if you don't have that, it is sometimes possible. Like for example, if your uh, architrave was further over where my thumb is here and there isn't room to fit it, to cut down here on the architrave very, very carefully um, so that you create that flat space because there almost certainly is flat timber on the door frame behind. But you're going to end up with possibly a jagged edge down here. It might not be very attractive and you might have to fill it. At that point, it might be worth considering removing the architrave completely, fitting your London bar, possibly the Birmingham bar that we're going to talk about in a second, then installing new architrave um, so that it all looks nice afterwards, you know, smaller architrave or move it over. So I said earlier that some doors don't need a London bar um, and the doors that don't need a London bar are not going to have any architrave here. Uh, typically it's going to be houses that have been converted into apartments um, where they didn't have the full width of the door and that instead of having um, a architrave here, you've actually got wall here so that your keep is more or less in the wall. Um, sometimes the keep has been recessed into the plasterwork to get it in because there's so little room here. If that's the case, really you've already got a very strong situation because it's going to be the wall that's resisting these inward forces if someone's trying to kick the door down. So what does the London bar do? Okay, so the door frame is made of wood and wood is relatively weak in these circumstances. So if somebody's trying to crowbar the door open or kick the door open, something's gonna give and the door's gonna come open. What normally gives first is the door frame splits. And what happens is the keep of the yale lock comes away from the door and where your mortise locks are, probably better if I look at the top one, the, the wood here splits also and that comes open. If I've got photographs, I'll show them now so you can see what I mean. The door, the door has failed and the burglar is in. So this London bar essentially turns this wood into steel, if you like, it's a reinforcement. And these screws are very long and very, very tight. So as the door is being kicked or forced, this bar is resisting those forces and preventing the, the door frame from splitting. So the phone call that we get practically every single day is, um, oh, somebody said, uh, get a London bar fitted. How much to fit a London bar? Well, fitting a London bar on its own without any of these other measures that we're talking about actually might not help. It might make matters worse. And I'm gonna go on to explain it, but the reason I'm saying that is we talked about the failure. So what fails is the door frame and you've been burgled, but your door is still intact normally at that point. But if you have a London bar fitted, if you just put a London bar on your door and somebody's without doing the other things and someone's kicking the door in, your door's gonna split open. And if your door splits open, you now need a new door. 
uh, whereas repairing a door frame isn't as bad as having to replace an entire door. Hopefully I've got a picture now to show you of a door failure. So how do we mitigate against the door splitting if we fit a, if we fitted a London bar? Well, the first thing is the night latch. We wanna make sure that we've got a good heavy duty night latch, um, not just a basic Yale lock. Um, and I'll show a picture of a basic Yale lock now. You want a night latch that's heavy duty. I'm gonna open it up. That's using more than just a couple of screws to hold the strike plate or keep to the door frame. And as I look at the edge of the lock here, we're looking for this British standard kite mark. So we're gonna have two things here that we're gonna have, if it's a house, it can be BS 3621. So British standard 3621. That's the certification for theft resistant locks. Um, and that is permissible to have a keyhole on the inside. So you can do that on a, um, on a house or a single occupancy. Or if it's an apartment, then you'll have a different BS number here. It's gonna be uh, BS 8621, which is for the keyless egress um, standard for fire regulations and you'll see that's blank there's no keyhole there so that you can't um, lock it with a key from the inside so that you can always escape without needing needing a key and likewise um, with mortise locks on in a house single occupancy it's fine to have a key operated lock from both sides so the key goes in this side on the inside and goes in there on the outside but if it's a, a flat then it needs to be a keyless egress lock, which is called a thumb lock or a thumb turn lock. And I'll show you a picture of one of those now, but they can also have deadlock reinforcers and I'm gonna talk about those next. So the second way we can mitigate against the door failing, because we've talked about the London bar protecting the door frame from failing, is these deadlock reinforcers. And so what happens is, and I'll look at the top mortise lock, is when you fit the mortise lock, you are making a mortise, you're making a big square hole in the door, and you're left with these thin pieces on the side, and your door is weakened um, by doing that particular task, um, and it makes it easier for it to split out, uh, like that picture I showed you earlier on. I'll show you again now. But what these deadlock reinforcers do is they mitigate against that removal of timber and they actually bolt through. So on the outside, you have no bolt holes, so no one can dismantle it. And on the inside, you have the bolts. And running through there are thre threaded rods and we do them up with a spanner. And what that does is that compresses this wood and prevents it from spitting out like I showed earlier on and makes the whole thing much, much stronger. And that's gonna save your door. So if you're still with me, and uh, yeah, well done, you're very patient if you are, I know it's quite boring, but um, as you're looking now, and we've presuming we've done this uh, work, or you've done this work, or had someone do this work to your door, um, you've got a very strong looking door. So from the outside, burglar comes along, and I must stress, you've got to lock the mortise locks. We fit these things on loads of people's doors, and they don't actually lock them. You know, you've got to actually physically lock all the locks that you've got 24-7 um, to make sure that you're secure. But if you have got all these, you're gonna look very secure from the outside and the burglar comes along and thinks, oh, well, they've put all the security in. I won't try kicking this side of the door down. I'll kick this side of the door down. I'll kick the hinges, because normally what happens is your hinges are just held in with a few screws that way and they're normally quite short and a few screws into the door. And if you're booting the door here, is the hinges come splitting out of the door. I'm not sure if I got a picture of that. If I have, I'll put it here. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Um, so what can you do about it? So we looked at those uh, hinge bolts and we're gonna go into that and what they're for. But now we have this Birmingham bar. And as you can see, the Birmingham bar, steel bar, same construction as our London bar over here, um, is right next to the hinge. And those screws are underneath the bar. They're there where my finger is. And the bar is preventing those screws splitting out. Um, and it's making this whole side of the door frame, the hinge side of the door frame, much more secure and uh, less vulnerable to physical attack. So that's the job of the Birmingham bar. Another word on the Birmingham bar, occasionally we fit the Birmingham bar on this side of the door and that's if you don't have a night latch. So if you don't have the requirement for this hooped part, it might be that you end up with a Birmingham bar on both sides of the door. So then we've got the hinge bolts that I showed you earlier on and there you can see the hinge bolts. Just give you an idea, there's the door. 
and what we've got is this uh, steel pin that is uh, we drill a hole and this is driven into the door and it's very very rigid you've got this rectangular receiving plate with a hole and this is recessed here and as the door shuts i'm not sure if i'm going to be able to show you but as the door shuts i'll try but i'm going to get crushed by the door i think you get the idea that's going to engage in there and that gives you more resistive force against someone trying to kick the door from that side of the door this and this form a solid joint, if you like, and help prevent that. Spy hole, I guess you know what a spy hole is. You're looking through it from, uh, from the inside and it gives you a wide angle view of the outside. That's a spy hole. You'll notice no door chain on this door. That's because I hate them. Door chains are useless. Door chains hark back to a time of gentleman burglars where you know, the, the the person would put the door chain on and then open the door to the caller and speak to them through this gap, you know, um, and the, the burglar would, would uh, you know, run away, oh, they're not gonna get in, I'm not gonna get in because of the door chain. Um, these days, door chains, not a good idea. If you don't know who's there, don't open the door, don't unlock the locks. You might have one of these ring doorbells or talk to them through a window or something like that because if you open the door and the only thing between you and the burglar is this thin piece of chain joining the door to the door frame, the burglar is going to force this door open, the, the chain will snap, the door's gonna come flying this way and hit you in the face. So not only are you burgled, you're injured as well. So you, know, you don't wanna be opening the door or using door chains. And I'll put my uh, WhatsApp number up on the screen now. And when you do WhatsApp me, if you could please put your postcode in the whatsapp so that i know where you are so if you do want the work done i can tell you if i can do it or not so hopefully that makes a, a bit more sense because you know here this london bar birmingham bar people don't really know what it is i thought it was high time that i explained it all my name is david thank you very much if you're still here watching that's amazing please like this video and subscribe um, if you will do that that would be fantastic and thanks for watching